coming you may wonder why do we look like this okay so when we were organizing our first meetup one of the guys suggested that we probably are going to cook something and yeah, and then another active member suggested the, that we would exchange bread recipes what a marvelous idea, we can do that, of course. But of course, we can do other things as well. And we are at the DrupalCon. Why we should talk about bread recipes? Let's talk about Drupal. So my name is Anna. My name is Anna, and I'm the founder and CEO of Coding Girls. And I'm Maria Totova. I'm a Drupal developer from Bulgaria and Coding Girls Plovdiv community leader. Gender gap? Oh, no, seriously? Oh, again, some feminists talking about discrimination. In fact, that's the most common perception that we receive from when we organize our Coding Girls meetups. What's wrong? Like, what is gender gap? Are there any gender gap? What the gender gap are you talking about? So in this talk, we are going to present the latest research, the real number of the, of the women in technology and provide our roadmap on how we can close that. To begin with, 64% of females are studying a STEM subject in school, so the interest is pretty much high. While the percentage of women studying a STEM subject at the university is twice less. No wonder only 3% of females said that a career in technology is the first choice. As a result, we have only 11% of females that are working engineers. According to the latest research, according to Eurostar, there are less than 17% of females in the ICT sector. Another interesting fact that the majority of leadership roles are taken by men, less than a half. In fact, less than 40% of females are engineer as our managers in the EU. And what about Drupal? Well, you see here, only about 20% of the Drupalists are female. And when we, we know the Drupal Association are making their best to make the Drupal community more inclusive and diverse, and we can help here. And we are curious about the numbers this year. I'm very happy to see some ladies, but maybe they come just because we are talking about the gender gap. I will ask you afterwards. Yeah. And speaking about contributing to Drupal, the statistics become even worse. You see that only 6% of Drupal developers that contribute to Drupal core and modules introduce themselves as women. It means that there may be more, but they're not identified. But you may wonder what or who stopped these women from entering IT field. So according to the survey, there are three major barriers like lack of mentors, lack of role models, and gender bias in the workplace. According to the European uh, Union, currently, in 2016, there were 8 million people that were employed in the ICT sectors, like in general. Based on the current trend, we can assume that by 2020, there are going to be 10 million, females, uh, 10 million people working in the IT field. Uh, there will be places basically for, for different specialists. And the question is how many of these places will be occupied by women? So, in order to close the gender gap and the talent gap in technology, we need a diversity of thought. Companies, communities, organizations should allow diversity of thought to serve as the competitive advantage to stimulate new growth, attract new talent, and generate new market opportunities. To begin with, everything starts in the childhood. From early ages, boys and girls are told what they're supposed to like and who are they supposed to be. For example, they are primed by the toys they're given. Usually when you give a toy, you give to a girl, to a girl you give a ribbon or a doll that looks nice, pilky color and so on and so forth. And for boys, you give cars and trucks and in that way you stimulate there to go in one or another sphere. 
the good news that kids think, oh, I play game, I like it, I enjoy it. Don't think, oh, I'm coding or I'm programming because I'm a girl or because I'm a boy. They just have fun coding. To support our arguments, we have conducted an online survey. It's ongoing, but we have more than 100 results now, so we want to show our, some of our results with you. The, one of the biggest questions of our query was, what is the most challenging part of being a woman in tech? And the answers were, not taken seriously, people assume that you are not technically, technical or that you are rather a secretary than a coder, a bit of an outsider, the only girls in the boys club, lack of female co-workers, imposter syndrome in general, condescending man, the most interesting was that women feel like they are talked over by men. They can hardly get a word. That was one of the things that actually was astonishing. And yeah. It's important not just to state the facts, but to outline what we can do to change this. And role models are the case. There is a saying. You cannot be what you cannot see, but we would rather rephrase and say that you can be what you can see. A shortage of female role models is one of the major barriers, and there is also lack of understanding of how technology can enable women to change the world. In fact, some of the females aren't considering technology careers because no one is putting forward it to them as an option. And they also think that they won't make a good fit. For example, Usually, when men apply for position, open position, they, re when they, they apply when they meet 60% of the requirements, while women, usually in most cases, when they meet 100% of the requirements. And in order to support our arguments with role models, we have done one interesting thing. So we interviewed role models in the tech field in Drupal, and we conducted a video survey, and we want now to present our results. This is going to be presented for the first time and was especially prepared for the DrupalCon. And I hope you will like it. So, to continue, um, if you look at coding, it's the skill that affects every industry in some shape or another, and coders are creating huge breakthroughs, new inventions, services, capabilities, products, solutions, system, and a lot more. So having the ability to code, or even just the understanding how the things work, can give you a seat at a table, and it allows you to be part of the conversation so you can make part of the future. Um, oh my god. Yay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Coding as a skill is not enough. We can use it to, for some purposes, of course. Girls need the sense of community. They need to, sometimes they need to see role models because they need mm, to see that there are people, there are women out there who have succeeded. What else do they need? More mentors, like-minded girls, and here coding girls come to help. We give them support and empower them to get started in coding and to solve world's problem. We coding girls believe that together we can empower, educate and engage girls. That together we can build the tech community everyone wants to be part of. Okay. Since you couldn't see the video, maybe I can present my story. So here I am with a really big picture of me. But who I am? Well, I'm a Drupal developer from Bulgaria. How it all started for me? Well, I was about four years old when I enjoyed going to my parents' offices and playing on that amazing machines. Uh, they now pre seem pretty ancient, but they were great back then. I spent a lot of time playing games. I am just making some word files and whatever. And then, in school, of course, I loved science subjects. I studied maths till high school. 
And then I, uh, I showed interest in writing poems, short stories, and that kind of stuff. So I continued studying in a humanitarian high school. And after that, I graduated. I took a Bachelor of Art degree in English language and literature. But I have always known that I want to work in the technology field. Even before I graduate, I decided that I will continue with some Master of Science degree. And here is how I ended up in software engineering. I needed to start practicing after that. And back in 2012, there weren't many companies in Bulgaria who would take young graduates without experience. Then I was searching for some options, and I found that amazing European Union program for young people till the age of 29. And uh, then I needed somewhere to start work, of course. So I asked a friend of mine if he will agree, if he would agree to teach me. And thankfully, and fortunately, he did. I started working in his small company, and he taught me the basics of PHP, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Then I worked on some small projects, start, started using WordPress, but yeah, it wasn't enough. I needed something more. I wanted to work in bigger companies on more complex projects. And then some friend of mine mentioned about Drupal. Yeah, what's that? I went to the Drupal.org, and the first thing I saw was some teams. Uh, they didn't, weren't as good as those of WordPress. I didn't like Drupal at first, but I decided to give it a chance. So I went through the docs again, and when I write about content types and notes and all they, we can do with them, oh, it was fascinating. I loved it at once. And I decided that I'll make, I may use Drupal, but for what? I need some real project to work on. I can't just watch some videos or read docs, it's boring. And what do I need? I want something that I can use later. That's how. I thought to myself, well, why not create a portfolio website and use it to apply for a job? Yeah, well, that's how I started reading docs, watching videos, working at the same time. And here is the result. Totovo.eu came to world. And I did apply for a job. You know what happened? I got a call on the very next day. It was amazing. I didn't know Drupal developers. I was so cherished back then. But then I started working in a rather big company with offices around the world. And there I met one of the best guys ever. He was a great mentor and he uh, somehow, well, he's the reason that I'm here today, speaking and working with Drupal at all. Yes, we talked about role models before. I, I don't really need role models, and I didn't met a lot of problems because my parents were very supportive, and I actually don't care what other people think. If I did, I wouldn't be able to work with Drupal. You know how many haters there are out there, sure. But here I am using Drupal and ready to teach it to other people. Of course, it wasn't so smooth. You know, this is one of the famous and my favorite pictures of Drupal learning curve. Yeah, well, I thought, well, I must be very stupid. It's so hard. What's wrong with me? And then I read, I read that amazing article where I saw, whoa, people out there, they are feeling the same. It was pretty normal. OK, I won't give up. I'm not that kind of person. I'll just continue. And today, I joined, not today, but today here I am as a community leader because when Anna mentioned about her ideas and when she established Coding Girls Organization, I thought, hey, I can do the same that other people did for me. And I can help, I can be a mentor to other people. Why not little girls? They need to see a support, they want to 
see that it's possible if they like it, if they show interest, why not try? Because opportunity is everything. And these are some of the children from our courses that we conducted. And uh, of course, I, they are at the age of seven to nine. And we used Scratch for starting for their first steps in programming. It was amazing. They could do any, everything I showed them. And we created a game. We created um, interactive animations and other things. It was amazing. I'm sure you can see it on their faces. So one of the things that Maria had mentioned, we do organize courses. We do organize workshops. But I want to tell you what do we actually do except for that, and what do we want to do? So one of the things that I want to tell is coding girls clubs and what is this for? So boys and girls do usually equally good in mass, in elementary and middle schools, but at the age of 11 and 12, the girls start to lose their interest in science and maths because of the peer pressure, social media influence, and this has to be a thing. Like teenager girls also don't want to be seen as nerdy, they want to be seen as cute girls, they want to be seen as smart girls, but not smarter than guys. And that's one of the reasons that they need this role model so they can see, okay, she's cool, I want to be like her, and I can be like her. And that's one of the things to foster the interest. Another thing is, of course, to organize the club where each and every girl will feel comfortable expressing the interest and being part of the community that will support. And uh, coding, coding girls clubs are in fact easy to organize because you need, you need a location, you need internet and laptops, and you need a facilitator who just leads the program. And in fact, if this person could be a volunteer who is in technology and who is a teacher, for example, in the school where the club can be organized. Except for the school, it can be organized in the library, for example, community centers, and any other place that supports, um, supports education and uh, inclusion. Another thing is uh, Coding Girls Hackathon. It's uh, either one to two days event where participants will be grouped into teams and ideally it should involve a mix of talents, developers and designers, and the team works on a project. And yeah, we are planning to have hackathons for a cause. So if you can do something cool together and have a reason to do that. Um, the summer immersion program is for girls uh, of 10 to 11th grade, usually one to two months program each week. And uh, uh, which of the programs covers, covers projects related to computer science, such as storytelling, web design, apps. And we are planning also to invite females as guest speakers and help connect girls with the, with the in females engineers and entrepreneurs. And the final step, the result of the summer immersion will be the product, uh, the, the, like based on the project, will be presented to others. So our mission is to empower girls to, begin, to get started in coding in order to become, in, in order to become, uh, <laughs> in order to become uh, leaders, innovators, and entrepreneurs, and be able to change the world with the help of code. Some may say that we are dreamers. But we are not the only ones. And here comes our coding girls meetups, and guys also come to these meetups. And they're usually organized for the members and people who are interested in becoming our members. And we discuss our achievements, our ideas, and our next steps, so everyone can join who has the interest. And this is one of our recent meetups that was organized in Softuni in Sofia. In fact, we do believe that each city has a lot of young and motivated people. So you can unlock the potential of your city. And here we are in Vienna. So why not start a coding girls community here? I'm sure there are some of you here who could really help younger to become future innovators, entrepreneurs, and leaders, and make a positive change with the help of code. Of course, all the things that we have achieved so far became possible with the help of our volunteers and their real heroes, and I do really want to thank them for everything that they have done. And there is one Latin proverb that says, he who teaches learns. I would paraphrase and say, she who teaches learns as well. 
So one of the benefits of becoming uh, a mentor is reverse mentoring, learning from those who are less experienced. So it helps you to understand some things more and even they ask questions, it helps you to go deeper. And of course, it opens opportunities and doors for them and you can position also yourself as a specialist and benefit from the self-fulfillment and personal growth. Sometimes parents might not see the potential of their daughters and they rather imagine the boys to be in, in technologies and girls. So this is, this is one more time increases the potential of organizing communities and having clubs where women who are in technology and men can become also mentors who are in technology could support the, could support the younger generation to help them to pursue their career in tech. And we coding girls want to do that and already doing that. Since we know that the interest of girls in technology falls dramatically down when they become teenagers, we focused on preparing some courses and a curriculum for teenage girls. And why not use Drupal? It's as a site building, of course, as a starter. And then, if they like it, they can create some, yeah, you know, project, maybe a blog about something that is, interest, is interesting for them, like, why not fashion, dancing, whatever, or maybe some school projects. And they can do this. They can try and see what it is to create a site. If they like it, they, they, can, they can continue and then choose rather front-end or back-end developer. They may continue working with Drupal, which we really hope, or they can choose another field. And this is how actually can, this can help to grow the Drupal community, because you all can agree that we need more people. All our programs, our courses, our workshops, summer immersion, hackathon, they are free of charge. That's why we need the support of those who believe into the positive change with the help of code. And we are looking for partners. Uh, what to partner with us? What is it for partners, in fact? That's probably one of the things that partners are wondering, and maybe some of you are representing some companies, not just being a developer, or maybe being a developer and having your own company. So one of the things is to invest in the future. Because there is not just the gender gap, there is a talent gap. And in order to invest in future, in order to inspire, educate, and equip girls with the up with the computer skills to pursue the 21st century opportunities and you can also become an active advocate of gender equality and position yourself as a supporter of diversity of thought. And of course, as every organization, we want to have our big days, Coding Girls Conference, day of sharing, networking and getting inspired. And we dream big, though we start small. We are currently starting in Bulgaria, started already in Bulgaria. And, but our vision is to empower girls all over the Europe to get started and pursue their career in tech. Because we think education is the most important thing and we can do our best. We should do it, we must do it. And on Monday, we took part, part in the community summit where we worked in teams with some of you here today. And we chose, um, one of the chosen topics was our proposal about the Drupal curriculum for teenage girls, which uh, was kind of transformed for all children, for all target, different target groups. And I think that um, it was an amazing opportunity to, see, to share our ideas, our plans, to talk to people from other countries, from other backgrounds, and um, actually do something together. One of the most asked questions, can boys join the organization, come to meetups and courses, for example, to train? And we invite men in, because in fact, the world is not black and white and we cannot just grow girls and okay, go, code. Because when they enter the tech field, of course, the guy's there and that's why we need to make, to raise the awareness of both men and women in order to create a support and a safe environment once we help girls to get started. And one of the major benefits of having both females and males in technology is cross mentoring. For example, men are mentoring girls and women are mentoring boys. That could be one of the ways. And um, yeah, to sum up, 
change is possible, change is possible with code and with your help. Sometimes we want to change some things, but why to wait? Why not do it today? Why not start doing that? And we'd really love to have you as part of Coding Girls and you can support us being mentor, speaker, start a club, and the smallest things that you can do is to spread the word about our organization in order to get more people to know about that so that we can help them to pursue their career in technology. The dream of a young girl to become an engineer, the dream of a young girl to be a businesswoman, the dream of a young girl to become an entrepreneur, the dream of a young girl to change the world. It is possible, it is reachable, and we believe that the great change is possible with the help of code. We believe that giving a chance to girls and women and putting it forward as an option in order for them to become innovators, leaders, entrepreneurs, we make the world a better place for all of us. And the last but not the least, we were very fascinated by the sessions and keynotes that we got inspired and came up with some rhymes. So, let's turn the challenge into results and make a change. It doesn't have to, <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay to be a bit strange. And Drupal gets more inclusive and diverse. Let's make it real, not just rehearsed so everyone feels important and of worth. Give us a reason why not on Earth. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Now is the time for your quick questions, please. <laughs> Hi, thanks for the presentation, was very interested. Uh, I don't have a clear idea about the mentors as a man. I need to think about maybe today in the women. In Drupal we can talk about longer, but I think that is a very great idea what you are doing. It has a lot of value. Uh, I would like to know uh, the, the meetings with the adults is to talk about what you are going to do with the ch uh, girls or is about uh, women in general? Well, we have different target groups. The first target group is for young children at the age of 7 to 11, but we use crutch there because we want to make it fun to raise their interest and make them think, start think logically. About teenage, teenagers, this is the second target group, yes, we chose Drupal. It's perfect because it's easy to install. You can start customizing using uh, as a site builder. And then if uh, you show some interest, you can continue in technology. Well, about, we are thinking, yes, about, uh, Actually, we have a third target group, that's the instructors, because in order to start making courses, we need some, somebody to teach these young people, these girls. So we are planning on making a curriculum for and train instructors. Mm -hmm. And we are preparing at the moment some materials because we think that it will be a self-guided, uh, a self-training, but guided training, guided by us. And we want uh, whether these will be men or women, or even uh, high school seniors or university students, they can come and join our training. Then they will receive these certificates, mm -hmm. and we'll check that they have the skills needed. So they can go back to their schools, to their university, uh, to their community center, and start training children, teenagers, and why not adults? as well, but at the moment our focus is on young children and teenagers. As yeah. for the adults, it's about instructors. I'm afraid that if it's with also guys or children or men, maybe the focus of the beginning at why you are doing this is missing because the feeling that I get it is like the gender gap. And if we don't focus that part in girls, in women, then 
We are making something general. Uh, okay, yes, uh, we have uh, two parts that we focus on. If it's going to be a man, the lecture that it's going to be a man, he will teach young girls, only girls. Uh, if uh, we make courses for all children, boys and girls, the trainers, the instructors will be ladies only. So you see, we focus on ladies training as uh, students uh, and as instructors. Okay. It's, it's less about focusing on the gender gap, it's more than focusing on the educational aspect of it. But in order to, to yeah. But, I mean, it's girl, coding girls. And the, the topic is gender. The, at least my feeling that the first idea, I mean, the presentation, all the topic is about gender. That's why my yeah. question. Uh, do you have some connection with another organization of women coding? I mean, more, more surveys? No, or? Uh, organizations around the world. If you yeah. have some connection. Yeah, so. yeah, we have. If you have some ideas, we can talk afterwards, and yeah. maybe you'd like to introduce us, or we could get introduced. I know to some of them. We yeah, can awesome. share. Yeah, great. Yeah, thanks. But thanks. thanks a lot. And Thank just you. one more thing. Yes, we are coding girls on one hand because we help girls to start coding, but on the other hand, um, the members of coding girls are women. <laughs> That's why we are coding girls. We are the coding girls helping others. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for the talk. Um, I have two questions. Uh, first, can you tell us where to find the movie that we were not allowed to see? <laughs> the, film, the movie is great, <laughs> trust me. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, of course. We, we wanted to present it especially for the Drupal Con. We'll post it afterwards. The sound is not working. That's unfortunately because it is awesome. <laughs> uh, we, will, we will post it on our page and maybe together with the session. Uh, on we, that we page. Check that, yeah. So on our website, and I don't know if Twitter allows that, we can provide the link, for example, there and to share it with okay. tweet. Uh, my second question was, I, I run local meetups for Drupal developers uh, and I've found it really, really hard to, to get girls to come to these meetups. you have any general suggestions and tips how what I can do to improve this? Uh, I'm doing something wrong. I know. Uh, I don't know if we are scary, are we too geeky, are we hard to find? Maybe we communicate just among ourselves and likewise people, and that's not where women are. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the good ideas. Well, yes, it's all about breaking these barriers that exist. And why we started making courses especially designed for girls, not for all children, we often get that question. Well, parents, they, they are the biggest factor. When, they, when parents see a course for programming, they might bring their daughters, but most probably they will not. But when they see that it is especially designed for girls, they they tell themselves, well, why not? Let's get her there, let's try. And that's how we got all these girls. Because, yeah. Okay, but, but my question was uh, older girls. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah women. well, it all starts in the early age okay. and when we used to these stereotypes. So yeah. it's too late now. Sir. Yeah, no. so you want to invite ladies that are already in Drupal, do you understand yes. right? Yes, yeah? that's what, that and was my question. Did you have any ladies that came to your meetup? One. One, how did she feel about that? I, she never came back. <laughs> uh, sorry, what was your project? Were you making some project, developing some project? I'm sorry. Uh, at your meetup, what was about it? Is it uh, just about showing what Drupal is or starting developing some project? No. Well, it's general different topics, so it, it might be nerdy backend stuff or it could be just showing off what's going on in Drupal core. And so the, the one, one time when a female showed up, it was about showing off the media initiative in Drupal core and the current state where it was. But, yeah. Uh, well, maybe we can tell. Uh, we are making um, 
two days course now at Plovdiv uh, during the European Code Week. And uh, we will present Drupal there and we have designed this weekend as, um, especially for girls. Maybe you should do something like that or a special workshop or a meetup, a special design for girls so they feel that they can mix their... Yeah. Where are you based? What country? Norway. Norway. How many ladies in technology are there? I have no idea. No. Um, do you organize no. camps or like other events that are bigger than meetups? I don't know. I'm, uh, so this is, uh, we've been running these meetups for only uh, half a year. So, yeah. so we are, I'm, I'm, tr I'm kind of reaching out. I've been sending emails to, to girls or women that I yeah. know work in the tech industry and kind of specifically inviting them, please come and join us and see what it's all about and try to uh, be inclusive and, yeah. and, and maybe spread the word. Uh, yeah. But so far, I haven't been really successful. So I think we can help you. Okay. Sir? We can, we, I we, think we can we, help we, we you can, really. We I think we can them. find these women. Okay. <laughs> I think they're there. So we would like to help you really. We can talk afterwards really. Thanks for sharing. Uh, hello. Hey there. Uh, thank you for this great presentation. I really appreciate it, this whole in initiative. Uh, I want also to say here in Vienna, we have also some coding uh, club, or like there's the Rails Girls for Rails coding, but it's nothing regular. So there was like one time in some uh, event for coding, also for more uh, like um, women like you, older one. But I think it would be a great, great thing if someone set it up in Vienna for really girl, girls and small, um, and small, like small girls and y a younger one. And if you like, can, I can give you contact data of the Rails girls and Python girls people. Maybe they're like interested in it to make some regular event. Yeah, yeah thanks a lot. We'd love that. So we'd connect with you. Yeah, thanks. Hi, I uh, just wanted in general to invite everyone to go today that are interested in this topic to go today to Women uh, Drupal Days and talk about the, the topic because last year I was there and was another meeting. I mean, we didn't spoke about women in Drupal. That is the main topic in this session or whatever. Yes, we are thrilled to come this idea. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thanks, everyone. We do appreciate it. <laughs> and one more little thing. We do appreciate your feedback. It's actually our first time at DrupalCon. And we would love if you take one minute or two and to leave us your feedback. What yes, do you think? Maybe you, uh, maybe you should watch the video first as well. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks one more time. And wish you a successful and productive day. <laughs>